Hello out there and welcome to the great outdoors. I am in the yard behind my building right now because it is so hot. Uh, I cannot be in my art room. I'm here with my trusty water bottle and the artful box of the quarter. Uh, I've unsatisfyingly opened it a bit because I thought I hit record but I didn't. So you missed that. Um, it wasn't satisfying. So let me get out my knife and cut the rest of it the old-fashioned way. You guys, you guys, this has got to be satisfying. So this is the watercolor box. I don't know exactly what's in it. I like my surprises, so I haven't really looked at the spoilers. But ooh, it's pretty. So we've got paper. I'm not going to throw it because I'm outside. That's not litter. I'm going to put those away in my bag. There's a lot of orange paper as usual. And this looks really, really promising. So once again, <laughs> we have we have the little little bifold cards or one fold cards. What are they called? They're like greeting cards. They're cute. Uh, so we got those like that. We have a box full of snacks. And by snacks, I mean brushes. So we've got a nice variation of brushes here. They are clearly synthetic. So this is a nice broad tip flat. We have a diagonal tip flat. This one is a number six. The big one was a 14. So that's two flat brushes. We have some nice round brushes. I'm just looking around making sure my neighbors aren't watching me. This is kind of awkward. Uh, we have a round brush, size five, and a size four round brush, and a size one five brush. One, <laughs> and a size one uh, round brush. So that's a nice little variation of brushes there. Like that. And they have, just like in the ink box I think it was, they have this really nice like wooden handle and it feels really soft and, and it feels more expensive than this box probably was, you know. We also have a little pipette. It's a regular clear plastic pipette but it has uh, measurements on the side. 3 mil, 2 mil, 1 mil. And a nice F hardness pencil. Pre-sharpened. I appreciate that. Because I did not bring a sharpener down here. <laughs> so let me uh, close up this beautiful box. My brush maracas. And then we have... I think I know what this is because I received an email from, um, from the company saying that the masking fluid <laughs> sent in this uh, quarter's box is latex based, which is, you know, you can be allergic to that. I'm not, as far as I know. Um, but that's, I appreciate that they warned about that and that they would, in future boxes, not try to use a latex base. So that's, uh, that's nice. Ooh, and it even says exclusive to Artful. <laughs> Uh, this is the De La Rowney Aquafine Watercolor Art Masking Fluid, 29 and a half milliliters. That's a mouthful. Well, no, this is less than a mouthful. Don't put it in your mouth anyway. What am I talking about? Oh, yeah. <laughs> then we have, oh, this is so pretty. The actual watercolor tin. And it's got like the ring on the bottom, so you could be all, all artsy pro outdoors and like hold it in your hand. I've never done that. But it's, oh, it's so pretty. It's metal and it is mint, which is one of my favorite colors. <sighs> I'm so happy right now. This is so beautiful. I love watercolor so much, but look at this rainbow. Look at this beautiful rainbow of colors. Oh my gosh. <sighs> I should have brought my own, uh, <laughs> I should have brought my own palette for comparison because um, mine is like the same model basically, but black. Um, and I also use half pans. These are, these are half pan sized. They're small. <laughs> but they will last you like a lifetime. Um, but I have a very specific, you know, um, scheme of colors in mine. So I have like a warm and a cool of each 
basically each primary color and then a couple funky doodads that I like. Uh, and a Payne's Grey, which I have in a full pan, or a full, full cup, what's it called? And in this one you get a Payne's Grey in a half cup. I appreciate the Payne's Grey. I've mentioned in the previous video that Payne's Grey is like the mwah, delicioso. The most useful color probably you can have in your palette. That isn't like, you know, primary colors. Uh, I'll get into that later. So yeah, this is oh, so pretty. <laughs> I'm drooling. There's a bumblebee behind me. <laughs> yeah, so that's... Ooh, this is nice. And of course, a pad of paper. There's always a suitable pad of paper for the medium that they, uh, that they send you. Well, I've only had three boxes until now, I think, but there's always been paper in it. So this is uh, 25 sheets, 300 GSM, which is basically minimum for watercolor if you're going to get all wet and sloppy with your paints. You need a pretty pretty thick paper. Um, it's a sort of, do they, what do they call the grain? Texture, they say it's texture, but I would call this a f relatively fine grain. It's not like super, super bumpy. Um, I like a bit of texture in my paper. I just feel like it gives the paints more life. I love it. And then, of course, as always, we have oh, <laughs> we have the magazine with the inspiration, and just look at this. Oh, so pretty. Uh, all the inspiration and the fun stuff. I just, I just love looking in these. There, there's so much beauty to be had in here. Oh, look, a red panda. <laughs> Oh, and here's the, uh, the box art, I believe, or at least by the same artist, I should think, the Monster of Plants. So yeah, that's everything in the box. Let me uh, prepare myself and just try out all the paints. See you in a minute. So here I am with the pad of paper and all these delicious paints. And I was just flipping through the magazine and I noticed that they have an upgrade box for the watercolor and the reason I'm sighing is I think I have to get this because you get neon paints. Neon paints. Neon. Neon. I think I need those in my life. Uh, <laughs> and I mean, they don't, uh, like it says in the text here, they don't advocate that you paint a whole, a whole painting with neon paints. I've done it, I don't recommend it either. <laughs> but, like they say, they can be mixed with the tones in your current set to make something incredibly zesty. And if you call something zesty, I want it in my life. So, um, there's that. Uh, price for, you know, the regular box, I will put that here. You know, Tickle the screenshots, hey! And uh, as usual, this is a subscription box. I will talk while I unwrap these these half pans. Uh, it is a subscription box which comes quarterly, which is every is it three months? <laughs> I can never remember. Okay, so I'm seeing something here that's a little bit of a downer. Uh, the label. For each half pan has the name of the color, which is yes, I appreciate, but the actual pan does not. Which I mean, yeah, a permanent marker will fix that just fine. Um, and these are sticky, so I'll try sticking them to the back and see if they if they hold. Um, I do like having the names of the paints because if you're going to rearrange your palette and stuff, and sometimes it's hard to see by the pan what the color is. I mean, like this looks black, right? But it's, it's a Prussian blue. So that's one little drawback, but one that is also easily fixed, so I'm not, I'm not heartbroken about it, you know? <laughs> it's fine. Uh, I just, I have a whole new set of watercolors. What do I have to be upset about? Am I right? So here's the Payne's Grey. And like I said before, this is one of my favorite shades. This is like the essential watercolor shade. You use this to darken your shades, you know, in a natural way instead of using black. This is great for using natural shadows. Um, if you're painting an outdoor scene, the list goes on, but that's that's an essential shade, so I'm glad they put that in there. 
so I'm just gonna speed through opening the rest of these up and you could just admire the rainbow as I work. And there we have it. There is my shiny new set of watercolor half pans. Does this come out? Oh. See now that's a feature. I don't think my uh I don't think my normal palette does that. Okay, so <laughs> my old palette totally does the same thing. I can't believe it. How did I not know this? <laughs> Good job, Artful. I like that. There's like extra, extra mixing bits in there. Hmm. Nice. These pans, you remove them by pulling this little back uh, doohickey there and they just release and then you push them in and they're, oh yeah, I just turned it upside down. They're, they're stuck in there. <laughs> so I've stuck all the uh, labels on the back. I can't see the names of the colors, so we're just going to have to deal with that. It's fine. I thought ahead and I brought a little cup of water. Just gonna pour some water in there because I did know that this was a watercolor box. So here we go. Let's just test out each and every one of these beautiful, beautiful shades. I'm gonna use the um, this the diagonal brush, flat brush. Fits perfectly in the pan too, wouldn't you know it? So I'm using the included paper of course. Wow, this looks really pigmented. That's super bright. So, oh, hello, Mr. Bumblebee. Uh, I think this is the lemon yellow. Like I said, I didn't... Uh, I didn't remember. I don't remember any of the names, but here we go. Ooh, Ooh that's bright. I love it. And then next we have another yellow. I'm going from lightest to darkest, or yellow to the other end of the spectrum. Uh, this is, ooh, this is more like a golden yellow. Ooh, I love this color. Wow, these are packing a punch. They're not only really bright, but they're like, they have good coverage. The thing that I really like about watercolor is that you can choose, you know, you can play with the opacity in an easy way. But these are, these are nice and opaque. Here's the darker yellow. And this, the middle one might be the one that was just called yellow. Now that I think of it. I can just, oh no, never mind. <laughs> I was going to check, but everything is on my lap. I'm, I don't want to drop anything. <laughs> so here we move on to the orange. I don't think I have a pan that's just called orange. Okay, it's a deep orange. It's very, very red toned. Nice. Then we're going to move on to a red. Oh, that's bright. So far, I'm impressed. Ooh. So this one's a little bit... I mean, next to the red, you can see this is really orange. But it's a little more uh, cool toned, maybe? I don't know. I don't know if it's like a pure red or if it's more of a crimson. I have to actually check. Ooh. Oh, it's just called red. Okay, well, that settles that then, I guess. When I was studying illustration, we learned that, um, you know, people's perception of color differs wildly, you know, partly physiologically, because some people are colorblind and some people aren't. And just the way we experience color is very unique to every person. But one, you know, when people were presented with a pure, a pure shade of different colors, the one color that most people were sort of, um, that most people agreed was the pure shade of that color was yellow. Absolutely useless fact. I just find that really interesting. <laughs> So here's the darker red. That might be like a crimson. Yeah, that's a lot more blue toned. 
And you're seeing these in natural lighting, of course. Not with my uh, halo light. Ooh, here we've got something deeper. That's, I think this is, this is the one that's called rose red, probably, because this is a really bright, like, magenta, magenta red. <laughs> Lovely. That'll make some nice pinks. And then moving on to an even darker red, it would seem. Oh, that's, that's purple. That's purple, you guys. It's my favorite color. I was really, this is my, my, my might be the one called, uh, Violet. I was really curious about the purples because purples and magentas because I find that those are hard colors in like ready pans and they're also hard to make mix. Um, I have a couple pans of purple from different brands and they're just not very pigmented but this is that's amazing. And the next shade this is some kind of blue I'm thinking oh no that's ooh. oh no that wasn't blue at all that's purple. That's a dark purple. I like her. So this is look very, looking very tropical at the moment. Now we're gonna move on to a turquoise. I think I'm gonna switch out my water because it was very, very dark. Luckily I have a liter of water with me outside because I do not want to die of dehydration today. It is super hot. For a sweet, it's super hot. It's like 30, 32 degrees outside. That is Celsius. So this one I know was called turquoise because I was really interested in how this would look. It's a really, really light, light blue. Let's see what that looks like on paper. Ooh, very pretty. It's like a uh, really sky blue. It's nice. There may or may not have been some purple on my brush when I did that. <laughs> well, that's a good color. I don't, I don't have anything like that from before, so that's nice. Then we move on to darker blue. Ooh, she bright. That's nice. That one looks like it matches the uh, the bright blue ink that we got in the ink box. Cool. And then the last one on this row, which is, this one I think was called sea blue. And I'm pretty sure that one was just called blue. I mean, if this one was just called red, that one's just called blue, right? So sea blue is gonna be more of a green toned one, I think, judging by the, oh yeah. That's, that is borderline neon, you know? Nice. So there we go, the blues, and the water is looking delicious. I don't know why you needed to know that. I just found that interesting. So let's move on to the next row, which is blues and greens and then neutrals. I'm actually gonna use that little ring down there. Move my paper over a little bit. Ooh, this is precariously perched on my lap. Ah, the joy of being in the outdoors. So this one I know is a Prussian blue because it was the first one I unwrapped and the only one that I really looked at the name. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, that's Prussian blue. That's nice and dark. Like a night sky dark. So, so far these seem to be drying down nice and matte. Uh, but there's still some transparency to them. You can see like the grain of the paper um, in a couple of them. And then I have this, which is... I have no idea, but I think we're still in the blues. Yeah. That is like... Oh wait, maybe that's the Payne's Grey. That's Payne's Grey, y'all. I was gonna say, because that's borderline black, but it's blue, so that... <laughs> yeah, that's Payne's Grey. Now I think this next one... Yes, this next one is olive green. Ooh, pretty. I am a big fan of the olives. Both as a snack and as a color. And there is something crawling on my back. Hang on. Leaf. And then we have another green. I think this might be the emerald green. Yeah. That's really pretty. 
And then next up we have, I think this was, I said I didn't pay attention to the color names, but apparently I did because I remember that this next one was called Tree Green because I misread it as tea green, as in like, you know, green tea, like matcha. Um, because the wrapping kind of had like that matcha green color, so I thought that was appropriate, but it's, no, this is, this is tree green that I'm going to swatch here. I believe. Or maybe this is olive. I think maybe this is olive. Oh yeah, that's olive. But that one's kind of in the same family. I mean, it's like a neutralized green, you know? So here, this next one is probably the the uh, tea green or tree green, whatever. Pretty. Ooh, that's like a that's like a brightened olive, like a, a like a yellow toned olive. I like it. <clears throat> and I have messed up my swatching area. No. Right. I'm sitting on a towel, so I can just like wipe my fingers on it. Okay, and, and now my cup does look like a bit of matcha. Let's try not to drink that. <laughs> Here we go, moving on to the yellow ochre color, which I would have known even if I hadn't seen the label because it's like a sand, sandy, mustardy yellow. Yeah. That is a color that I very much like. And then moving on to, and I think we're coming into the neutrals now. This is some some sort of brown. Ooh. Ooh, that's pretty. That's a really nice rusty rusty brown shade. Red toned brown. Now next I'm guessing this is a neutral brown. Yep. The chocolate color. This one feels like it's a little bit less pigmented, but maybe I just haven't dug into it enough. They don't feel watery at all. With They feel like they have a kind of a thick texture when you wet them. There's a mosquito biting me. Ew. I didn't feel like killing him on camera. I just blew her away. And the next shade is... No, leave me alone. I spared you. Have some respect. This one is gray, I suppose. Because the one next to it is black, I'm sure. So this is, this looks like <laughs> a badly pigmented black, but I'm, I, it's supposed to be gray. And oh, I just dried my brush off in the grass. And here's the black. I'm not a big fan of uh, black watercolor pans. The color just seems kind of lifeless on its own. I mean, it has its place, obviously, but uh, the 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 principle that I've always gone by that I learned when I was learning watercolor was to don't use black on its own, always mix it with something else, uh, or just use Payne's Gray. <laughs> when in doubt, use Payne's Gray. So now I'm going to clean my brush off really, really well because the last one is white, which is not going to turn up on the paper, but I still got to try it. White is also one of those shades that tends to make colors go kind of hazy and gross. So yeah, you can't see that, but that's white. <laughs> Uh, if you mix it with other colors. Um, yeah, I'm not I'm not a big fan of using white either uh, to mix with others, but I can learn. <laughs> and I'm sure using it very wet uh, over like a picture to make a mist or something would be really cool. So yeah, here are all the shades. There are... There are... 24 whole ass half pounds in this palette. That's amazing. That is really good value for what you paid. I mean, I pay, I'm sure I paid a lot more for my setup, which is far less, <laughs> far less paints. <laughs> um, but like I said, I stick to, I should have brought it down to, to compare. Maybe I'll put a picture in here. Here, and we can compare side by side. Um, I have a cool and a uh, warm tone of each primary color, which is red, yellow, blue, and a bit of green too. Um, and a Payne's Gray, of course. And then I have some other colors mixed in, some browns, um, one of those, the ochre. It's a good mixing color. And a couple of browns in different, in different uh, tones. But I, I mean, my palette has the same capacity and it's not full. So, 
Uh, I also have a whole pan of olive green in mine <laughs> because I really like that color. Um, I have a couple purples and magentas as well because I find that's a tricky color to mix. I mean, this purple is amazing. Uh, and that magenta is gorgeous too, so I'm glad I'm glad I have those now. And then of course we have all the little mixing slots. 22 slots to mix in, and I mean here you can do either a large amount of paint or you know a bit in each corner, so you have pretty much unlimited um, mixing space mixing space in this palette. And giant bonus points for the gorgeous color. This mint green is just like, oh, it speaks to my soul. I love it. So let me uh, dump out my now moldy looking matcha water and uh, try some more shenanigans with these paints. So I really want to try the masking fluid uh, but I'm a little bit hesitant because it tends to ruin brushes and I really don't want to... I don't want to ruin these new pretty brushes. What if I take a leaf? What if I take a... <laughs> okay, <laughs> bear with me. <laughs> what if I use... What if I dip a clover? A clover leaf in the masking fluid and then like stamp it on. Can I do that? I can do that. I'm gonna do that. So yeah, <laughs> mix this up. Uh, masking fluid is... For those of you not in the know, masking fluid is like, in this case, latex. In other brands, it's something else, but it's like a coating that you use that you can cover areas of a painting that you don't want paint on, basically. So let's say you are um, like a project that I want to do where I paint like a leaf or a flower and then have a Venus symbol in the middle. I would cover the Venus symbol in masking fluid and then let that dry and then paint over it. And then when it's done, you peel that away and it leaves the paper or whatever is under. I don't think I've tried masking fluid on other paint. I'm not sure that would work well. I might, might peel off the paint. So I'm extra, extra glad that uh, we got one of these because my masking fluid at home is probably in excess of 15 years old. <laughs> it's getting kind of gunky. Like when you open it up, there's like a thick, thick mass that's stuck to the lid on the inside because it's been there for so long. So I'm gonna let the masking bits dry, which is there and there. Dries pretty quick and it's hot outside, so that shouldn't be a problem. And while that dries, I wanna try mixing some colors and trying out the other brushes. So like, okay, there was a bug in my palette. I don't know what it was. I'd never seen one of those before. So like I said, this, let's see, which one was it? The, I thought that these two would make a nice pink, so I'm gonna try and just dilute those with water and see what- you didn't see those, did you? Because they're out of the shot. <laughs> so these these two shades, which are this one and this one, uh, I thought those would make really nice pinks, so I'm gonna just try and mix some of those with water and see see how they fare. Wow. Wow, that's so bright. That's so bright. It's like, holy cow. That's really pretty. I like it. Added some more water, made it even lighter. That's really nice. These are good synthetic brushes. I mean, I'm a big fan of, of um, sable, but I really, I really don't like buying uh, actual sable because that comes from an animal. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I don't think those animals do too well in the places they're kept, so uh, I do like my synthetic sable. I don't know if these are th synthetic sable, if they're just... I mean, sable is supposedly the best for watercolor. Let me consult ye old magazine. Pans, pans, masking fluid, brushes. Okay, it just says synthetic fiber. It doesn't say synthetic uh, sable or anything, but they're good. They're nice. They're really soft, but they keep their shape nicely, so that's that's pretty important. They have, I mean, that tip is super, super fine, even though this brush is pretty thick. Thick, thick, thick. Uh, so let's try the deeper rose red and see how she looks uh, diluted. This one is more violet, so maybe that's a violet color. 
you can see here in the mixing mixing pan, it looks a bit different. Oh, yeah, she looks a lot more purple diluted. She looks way more red um, straight from the pan. There's another bug on my paper. That's beautiful. That, that is, that's like my favorite color right there. <laughs> I'm so happy. So they mix nicely. Um, they blend out well. Let's try some wet on wet. So just wet the paper there. And then I'll go in with, I want to do the emerald green. That's beautiful. I realize it's probably not very visible on camera. But. So yeah, she bleeds out nicely. That's, those are words you don't want to say on camera. She bleeds out nicely. I've watched too much true crime. Uh, <laughs> Uh, so this green also dilutes very prettily, very bright, so the pigment is good. Now my cup looks like grape soda. So has this dried yet? Yeah, that feels pretty dry. So let's go over that. I want to do a little, a little gradient from this turquoise. I'm not sure I would call this color turquoise. It's more of a sky blue to me. So let's, oh yeah, I can feel the brush like sticking on the on the surface of that. That's really that's kind of tacky right there. Tacky in a good way, not tacky like like uh, bedazzled denim jackets. <laughs> What's tacky nowadays? I don't know. Uh, so there's the light blue, and let me blend that into um, the sea blue because that looks really pretty. Oh hello. So you can see the uh, the paint like sort of <laughs> what's the word? <laughs> it's repelled. Oh, gosh, the joys of being bilingual. Um, the paint is repelled off the masking fluid that has dried. So I'm gonna let the paint dry now, and then I'll peel it off, which is always a satisfying experience. I think a mosquito just bit me on my temple. Thanks. And uh, yeah, that is. Oh, the pencil. The pencil. The pencil. This one is Hardness F, which was actually, I mean, I hadn't had, a, you know, HB and H and B. I think we all know those. H HB is the middle hardness, which is basic pencil, whereas B, the higher the number is, the softer it is, and H, the higher the number, harder, the harder it is. F is basically HB. I'm not sure exactly where, where it falls, if it's on the harder end or if it's on the softer end, but it's like a mid, mid softness, which is why it's, it's a good pencil to include in a set like this, because it'll work for most things. So like it doesn't smudge, like a B would be all over the paper by now, because B pencils are, they're, they're a pain to work with. They have their purpose, but they, they're a pain to work with. If you're just sketching, I mean, if you're doing like proper, proper graphite art, fine, but I would never sketch with a B pencil. That would be a mess. But this one is fine for sketching, I think. So here we go. Let's move this out of the way. I'm realizing I should have brought paper because I can't dry out my... Uh... I can't dry out the palette now. Oh. And I don't have... Well, I can try the pipette with the... I mean, it's a pipette. What am I going to show you? It's like, oh, it sucks up water. Yeah, it works. I'll have to look in the magazine to see what they expect us to do with that, though. But I... Um... I suspect it's some sort of wet on wet experience. Um, usually you'd use pipettes with um, bottled watercolor, which is something I use a lot, but um, there aren't any in this set, so I, I, I suppose they need it for water. So let's see now if this has dried enough for me to peel it. Oh, that breeze is so nice. Uh, here we go. Where's the edge? Okay, I'm not sure the paint was entirely dry around it, but that's fine. Some people use like a rubber eraser to pull up the edges. I have a very small, um, a very small set of tweezers in my art room that I use to pull this back because sometimes it's hard to get a grip. But here we go. Yeah, that was that was a nice thin layer. 
applied with a clover leaf in lieu of a brush because I don't want to ruin the brushes. But that works just fine. Yeah. Let's get the other bit. Oh, come on. You can basically just like rub, rub it off, and there we go. That looks like some kind of course, some sort of little little blob monster. See, like. Oh. I made a new Pokemon. <laughs> Cute. Anyway, that's all the contents of the box. Uh, I'm super pleased with this box, even though it's a medium that's not new to me. The other ones have had. A different charm because it's like oh I get to try something new but this is just like this is um, this feels like home to me but it's very nice I like the quality of the colors and um, once it's cooled down a bit in the evening I will return in the art room and I will try and paint something an actual painting <laughs> using these new colors and I'll also also look through the book see if there's anything that I want to try in that painting. There's some techniques listed in here. I saw some wet on wet stuff here. Ooh, bread. Uh, so yeah, I'll re return soon. So in order to be able to test as much as possible from the box, uh, I made a fairly simple painting. I inked this row of houses using uh, pigment liners that I had since before, and I decided to do them in a rainbow of colors in honor of Pride Month. So each house will have um, a color the color scheme of one color from the rainbow or from the Pride flag. So I first um, diluted the colors to the lightness that I wanted as a base. Um, and then I remembered, oh yeah, I wanted to use the masking fluid as well. So I went back in uh, with the masking fluid and just uh, masked off all the windows or the, the glass panels in the doors and whatnot in all the houses. Uh, I'm not entirely sure this was necessary, but I wanted to test the product and it worked out pretty well. So yeah, uh, I'm masking off all the windows because I wanted to do those in really light Payne's gray um, and do like a like a shiny glass effect on all of them. So I didn't want them to be covered with the base color of the house. Uh, I'm not gonna talk so much about my technique here. I, I wanna talk about the products. Uh, I found that this, uh, this masking fluid was really nice and easy to work with. It's pretty thin, but it covers easily, dries pretty quickly. Uh, it was pretty easy to remove as well, as you'll see later. You don't need to be finicky, finicky at all. Just just uh, rub it off with the tip, tip of your finger and it's and it's gone. Uh, I, these are really, really small, small areas that I'm covering too. So I, I noticed that I that I went outside the lines a couple times as I was painting, but it was fine. That's not the product's fault. That was I should have used a smaller brush, but <laughs> I didn't want to use any of the the new brushes in the set because, as I said before, uh, masking fluid tends to absolutely ruin brushes. So here I'm going in with the smallest brush in the set and just laying down the base shade of all the houses, as you can see, red, orange, yellow green, blue, and purple. And I found these really easy to work with. They diluted well um, and they retain their brightness. You know, the pigmentation is really nice, even though I used quite a lot of water in all of these shades to make the base, uh, the base color for the houses. And it looks nice. I mean, they're really, they're really pastel, but it's clear which color it is. Nothing turned muddy. Um, they didn't pool at all on the paper. So the paper is decent quality too. And like I said, I like a bit of grain in my paper. And this was, I mean, for, for me, this is a light grain and I really liked it. It worked just fine. So yeah, I just filled in the little details, made some shading in the same color. That's a pet shop there, the red house, <laughs> if you couldn't tell. It's hard, maybe hard to tell on the, uh, on the screen, but there's like a little cat face and a dog face on the sign. So these, uh, these brushes, the tips on them are so nice. They are really super, super fine. And I find that they've kept their shape really well. And, uh, you know, as a synthetic brush with watercolor, it works just, just perfect. Um, they really were, it was no problem getting into these really tiny, tiny details of the window borders and the little, the little bits around the, the roofs of like this hotel. Wasn't a problem at all with this brush, even though it's, I mean, it's not the tiniest brush. 
mean, it is, it's a size one. Yeah, I know. But I mean, I do have much smaller brushes than that in my arsenal. But but for this, it was absolutely fine. The tip is really, 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 really thin. It taper the the tip of the brush tapers to a really fine point. So moving on here, you can see in the uh, on the edge of the door here, I painted a bit of the masking fluid uh, where it shouldn't have been and also on that window there. But that's like I said, that's not the product's fault. That was that was me. <laughs> so they layered well, too, since all the houses just are using one shade. I had to layer the color and that worked fine. I didn't, I mean, these are really tiny surfaces to work on. I didn't really notice any patchiness or anything. Uh, here on the blue house, I'm trying to make like a sort of brick texture by just layering that blue. Uh, worked fine. And that tiny, tiny, tiny brush was perfect. I wish I'd had like a tiny flat brush to do that with, but no problem. Uh, and then for the roofs of all the houses, I took a, the neutral brown and mixed some of the shade of that house with it to match. I wanted all the roofs to be to be sort of cohesive and brown toned, but in the in you know in the family of of the house that they're on, and that worked perfectly well too. Uh, actually, I think that these these brown shades are actually really really nice. Um, I I like the result of blending them with with the other colors. So yeah, mixing it with the blue kind of made it go more gray, <laughs> but that's fine. It gives some contrast and variation to the houses and that's that's what I wanted. So I think the biggest challenge of this was, oh yeah, the, the hotel with all the plants in the windows is green. How am I going to make a decent contrast to that? So all I did was choose a different shade of green. Um, and I think I probably darkened it with some Payne's gray. Yeah, I layered bits on the roofs as well, just to give it some texture. And also the little, the little stone chimney there um, I did in, I think, a Payne's Gray. Because I didn't, I mean, it's stones. I didn't want them to be brown. So yeah, I found that this, this worked really well. I mean, these are super, super tiny details, but it was absolutely not a problem. Uh, there was no bleeding on the paper. I worked on dry paper. It worked perfectly. All the trees were done in a grayed green shade, which I then layered a little bit for just to get some texture and, and depth. But I like the effect. I didn't want them to detract from the rainbow, <laughs> the rainbow that they are standing behind. Um, so that was fine. Yeah, all in all, I mean, these are really, these are really high quality products. And you get in th this bo box in particular, I feel like you got an ins insane amount of products for, for the price. And like I said, my base kit, which you know, in the in the in the clip I showed was my base kit plus stuff that I've added over the years. But I mean, my first actual base, which was literally just primary colors in warm and cool tones. I'm sure that that set cost more <laughs> than this box did. And that was without brushes and um, with a far less good, <laughs> a, a worse quality and clunkier actual palette holder uh, than the one that was in this box and than the one that I have. Uh, now in my original set. So yeah, really good value for money. I absolutely recommend this box. I recommend this subscription service as a whole. It's just been, it's just been a pleasure. Oh, here I made the mistake of removing the masking fluid before the yellow paint was dry. So it actually removes some of the paper, like the very, very top layer of the paper. So I had to redraw the lines in the windows. You saw me do that a couple seconds ago which was a big oops, but nothing I couldn't fix. But be aware that you have to make sure that the paint around the masking fluid is completely dry before you remove it. So yeah, doing the details in the windows. And like I said, I did a really, really, really dilute panes gray on all of these, huh? Cause they're window panes, haha. -ha. Um, and then I just layered up to get like the highlight effect, like strokes of light on them. So yeah, and here's that, that darker green that I chose for for the plants on the hotel. Yeah, I really like the way this little picture turned out. It's very cute. It would make a nice bookmark, actually. <laughs> I've called this piece Love Street because love wins, obviously. A little plant in the window there, barely visible. It's super tiny. 
and also in the window of the uh, pet shop. I don't know if you can tell at all. It's like two big sacks of pet food and a bus just drove by. Hi! Um, and a couple leashes hanging there in the window. I love doing fun details like that. And then there's of course a little cafe table at the, uh, at the right end of the street there. Because that's supposed to be a cafe, of course. So yeah, this is uh, my little my little rainbow rainbow love street. My my Pride Month artwork. I hope you enjoyed watching this. And like I said, I recommend the Artful subscription boxes. They're great, great fun. And um, yeah, I will show a still picture of the finished piece. Yeah, here we go all done <laughs> so there you have it there is my testing of the artful watercolor box i hope you enjoyed yourself i really hope i could inspire you and i hope i will see you next time bye